Hi friends, welcome to another episode of uh, Career Attainment and I am Vikram Limse. Now, sorry for a delayed video this time, but uh, this being the COVID vaccination month, some adjustments had to be done and therefore the delay. I hope you guys are keeping safe and for those of you who are eligible, have vaccinated yourselves, but either way, stay safe, mask up, be happy and be healthy. So today we will talk about one of the oldest debates going around in the world of management, which are relevant for your career, whether you should be a generalist or a specialist. Recently, this debate was once again ignited by a comment made by Bill Gates in appreciation of uh, David Epstein's book. I think it was Range where he says where uh, generalists succeed in a world of specialists. But this debate has been even otherwise going around for a long, long time. And to my mind, this is actually not a debate. Because this whole thing stems from a very Eurocentric idiom or a statement which has existed in the English language, which is jack of all trades and master of none. And why I say Eurocentric, I'll come to that in a bit. But just by twisting the statement just a little bit by saying jack of all trades and master of one instead of that saying jack of all trades and master of one, you change the entire meaning and change the tone from a negative to a positive. The genesis of this statement perhaps is from the early industrialization in the European world where people were just about moving from villages into uh, recently formed cities. Society had not developed and organizations and institutions, of course, had not developed. And to survive and to do well, you had to be good at your craft. Craftsmanship was important. This was before factories and all came in. And that's probably where this idiom stems from. Yeah? Jack of all trades and master of none. And that's what they must have said to someone who was not good at anything. But in the context of our own philosophy, this debate never existed. It was always about jack of all trades and master of at least one. Even if I take the examples from the Mahabharata, 5,000 years back, it was the same thing. Yudhishthir was good at his intellect and planning and strategic planning. Bhim was very good at raw strength and, and, and to wield the gada or the maze. Nakul and Sehdev, besides being great at, you know, soul fighting, Nakul was very good. It sa said that he was very good with animals. And uh, Sehdev, they say, was very good at reading the astrological charts and astronomy. But it was only Arjun, who was a great archer himself and was also adept at every aspect of warfare. So he was a specialist archer and a generalist yodha or a, uh, 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 or a fighter. So this concept of being jack of all trades and master of one has been the philosophy that we have seen over here and, it, and that's how it has progressed. But in the modern Western Eurocentric uh, concept has been pretty recent. I guess uh, it, it, when you look at it as a binary, that's where the problem arises, right? It's not about or, it's about and. So remove the tyranny of the or. It's not about uh, being a generalist or a specialist. It's about being a generalist and a specialist. That's what you should be aiming for. It's just like the old chicken and egg um, syndrome, what came before, right? When you look at a problem, when you split it and you manufacture a debate. Quite frankly, if you look at chicken and egg being a part of an integrated evolutionary trend, then there's no debate. Yeah, there could be a debate whether the ostrich came before the chicken or the chicken's egg came before the ostrich's egg. Now, that's if you really want to have a debate, you can do that. But what's the point in splitting a integrated evolution of chicken and egg and then saying whether the chicken came first or the egg came before that? The other reason why, in my view, this whole debate exists is because in the modern world, or especially in the world of technology, um, it's easy to define specialist roles. You can, in fact, do it in terms of keywords. And, and uh, very soon in future, and already, you know, roles are being defined by AI. Now, there's no human element. Ask any friend of yours who's uh, in the HR domain to define how difficult it is to define a 
generalist role and he or she will tell you. So as with everything else, people go for low hanging fruit. So it's very easy to define a specialist role. So you see a lot of um, specialist definitions around and then very few generalist role. And that's what, you know, kind of induces this debate once again. But I'm pretty clear that there is no binary in your career. It's best suited if you're a jack of all trade and master of at least one. Be good at at least one thing in your life. Let's look at some examples. For example, it's normally said that when you are in an organizational environment, when you have to be a leader or even not a leader, if you have to be a team player, then you need to talk to people. You need to transfer ideas from one to the other, understand what the other functions are. So therefore, it becomes very important in an organizational sense to be a generalist at the same time being specialist in whatever you're doing. They say that normally specialists are in, in, in individual professions like doctors, lawyers, sportsmen. But even there, I think uh, it needs to be thought a little bit. Now, I have a lot of friends who are eminent sports people at international level. But, you know, once they are off peak, they need to start. They started reskilling themselves and they moved to a generalist position. Why then take the position of, uh, let's say, Dr. Devi Shetty? Now, he's a great heart surgeon, the person who established Nara and Hidale. But besides being a specialist heart surgeon, I'm sure he's also a generalist administrator, knowing every aspect of his business to have created and run such a humongously beautiful operation like Nara and Hidale. So that's a classic example of even professionals or experts who are uh, thought to be experts and specialists are also generalists at the same time. So you could take that from that example. The other way to look at it is that the world, as we know, uh, you must have all heard of that term VUCA, the VUCA world, right? The, the volatile, uncertain, changing, ambiguous world. We, it's, it's much talked about, right? It's very fashionable, this VUCA world. Now this VUCA world can actually uh, put your career to great dangers mm, at, a, at a drop of a hat. So if you are a specialist and if you are a generalist, then your risk is mitigated by this VUCA world. Sudden changes happen, you can you know, take on a generalist role, but God forbid you are in a very, very specialized role, then uh, the whole industry changes and, and you are left with nothing. Take the example of, let's say, Colonel Saunders, who the creator of the KFC brand or the organization, or even J.K. Rowling, who, who, who became a millionaire after writing Harry Potter. Now, Colonel Sand Saunders was uh, apparently a railroad man and later an insurance broker. Now, if he had decided that he's going to be um, just that, a specialist insurance broker or a railroad man, when the depression hit, you know, he wouldn't have made this transition into, you know, survival transition of, you know, kind of frying chickens and, uh, you know, <laughs> coming up with the KFC brand. Or J.K. Rowling would have been a great translator or interpreter or something like that. I don't remember had she not been open to her writing skills. So you need to be very good at what you're doing, but you need to be also open and be generalist around other aspects of your life or organization so that you have a chance to mitigate risk for your own career. There's one more reason, you know, your personality flowers at different points of time. Why your personality, the, even the environment offers you or the universe conspires differently at different phases in your life. So at a particular stage, you might be a great guy at advertising and, and at another stage, you might be a great guy at something to do with finance. I don't know, something like that. So if, you're a, if, if you slot yourselves tightly, then you don't even allow the universe to help you towards your own success. You don't allow your own success to get a chance. So if you are a generalist and a specialist at the same time, you allow yourselves that success. That's what it means. So there's no debate. And finally, to my mind, we're all humans, right? We're not, we're not robots. We're not machines. We're not going to be doing the same thing again and again and again and again. By being a generalist, it allows you that spice in life, a little variety, which is good. It just makes you happy, makes you more productive. So that's why I think that this debate between whether to be a generalist or a specialist should not be looked at in a binary of this or that. It has to be and. 
and let that be very very clear in fact our philosophy has taught this from a long time i give you the example of uh, mahabharat so i hope this video is thrown some insight i hope you're like arjun a great archer and a great master of all aspects of warfare in everything that you do and i hope you will succeed and i'm sure you will if you are practicing both i hope this video has helped you if you like the video do share keep watching and subscribe to the channel and till we meet again see you bye for now